Good evening. Welcome to our Thursday evening Bible study hour. We have been studying Book of Revelation. Today is our sixth session. As I said in the beginning, Book of Revelation is a book which speaks about the future things, future events, future events as designed by God for the people of Israel and for the people of the entire world. But that revelation is given with mixture of apocalyptic expressions. We cannot read Book of Revelation and understand as we read the narratives, the Gospels and Book of Acts. Or we cannot read like the epistles and try to understand. Book of Revelation needs a lot of apocalyptic substance in the Bible, knowledge of apocalyptic substance in the Bible. From chapter 4 and onward, as it was marked and we meditated last time, God said to John, these are all the things that are going to take place. So all that are written from chapter 4 will take place in future. When it says will take place in future, Indeed, it means at any time from the day that Revelation was given around 96 AD and at any time. So the question would, uh, would be for us is this. Have they all had taken place? I would say no. Because from chapter 4 and onward when we read, it speaks about certain particular events that are essentially to take place. Then only the rest of the things will follow. In accordance to that belief, I would say it was revealed to John the things which will take place and even for us, they are yet to take place. Chapter 4, we read about the throne, the authority, and the one who is seated in the throne. And his authority, his awesomeness, his glory. And also we've seen, along with his throne, there was there were 24 other thrones and 24 elders were seated i said those 24 elders represents 24 elders represent the entire global body of believers and four beasts creatures we do not know precisely what they mean. Probably those four attest the, the story of God sent God, Jesus, life on the earth and his mission and his purpose. That could be one of the interpretations or we do not know, it's all heavenly creatures we cannot fully fathom. And as we read that, we could understand how that heaven will be in future. Right now, that heaven is somewhere. I said yes, but I don't know where is it. I also gave an ideal argument for that because the universe is not fully invented, comprehended by any scientist for that matter till today. 
So the universe is beyond human investigation at this point. And so, as many planets are hidden to us, there is a possibility, heaven, a real physical place, atmosphere, is hidden somewhere, but we do not know. But it is meant for us. I don't think there are people right now in heaven, those who are dead and gone ahead of us, godly people. They should be in some other place. I don't know where that place is either. In accordance to Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, wherever Abraham is, wherever Lazarus is, and that is the place where all the people dead in God, godly people's souls are resting. So heaven is prepared and heaven is waiting for people of God like you and me to be filled up eventually. In heaven, if at all, there will be a shout or noise or anthem you could hear, or even whispering, conversation. It will be pertaining to the holiness of God, majesty of God, glory of God. And that's what chapter four said about. Now, we get into chapter five. In chapter five, we read about a scroll in the hand of the one who is seated on the throne. And that is the key subject in chapter five. What is it that, what is that book? Uh, what are the things written? Why is it in the hands of the one who is seated on the throne? And to whom it will be given? Why it is given? And what will happen? In nutshell, chapter four and five are introduction to heaven, which is yet to come. When I say it is about heaven, it does not mean there is nothing about the earth in these two chapters. In these two chapters, if at all we could think of earthly matters, John was taken from the earth to heaven and he was seeing heavenly things. And in fact, he was on the earth, his spirit was taken to heaven. Again, I do not know how all these things had happened. Infallible word of God says, this is what had happened, so I believe it. Let's go and see chapter five in detail. Then I saw chapter five, verse one. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne, a scroll written. So we see the one who is seated on the throne. The expression of throne, we all know, it speaks about authority and the rulership, the one who reigns with authority. And seated, which means the job is done. What was planned is done. And then we see in the right hand, always hand, it depicts power. Right hand, it speaks about the unique power, authority. So, powerful God with unique authority, finish his work and getting into the next activity. And it was written on both sides. And then also it says, sealed with seven seals. So what does it mean? 
written within on within and on the back, which means it's a very significant scroll. That's the way I want to uh, consider it. Those days when they used to write on the scroll, they can write only on one side. But here we read on both sides. So it's something unique. It's not human written. It's not human stuff. It is not human product, divine product. And sealed with seven seals. There are two ways we can understand that. The number seven, particularly in apocalyptic literature, it speaks about the completion, fullness, all. So the seven seals, it speaks about the sealing authority's power, the genuinity, trustworthiness, dependency. And also on the other side, since people of Israel at this point are under the governing authority of Romans, the culture, cultural values and beliefs of Romans also had penetrated into Jewish people. Usually, if any document needs to be officiated, it has to be well sealed. That well sealed requires seven sealings on it. So when seven sealings are done, the document becomes absolutely legitimate. Nobody can question, nobody can raise any case against it. So both the ways, the seven seals are so meaningful. Complete, total, non-negotiable, non-debatable. With authority it had come. No one could speak against it. No one could rewrite about it. No one could erase from it. No one could add to it. Then the question comes, what is in it? Verse 2. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seal? So we do not know who is this mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Most probably, I believe, it should have been Gabriel. Or an angel sent in the place of Gabriel. Most probably it was Gabriel because Gabriel was an exclusive angel in the scriptures we read who brought all the kingdom secrets to the mankind. Gabriel was the one who spoke with Daniel. Gabriel was one, the one who spoke with Mary and Joseph. Since this is kingdom matter, I believe it was again Gabriel. Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seal? You know why that question is being raised here? In order to give an answer to the question, we should know some events that are documented in Book of Daniel. To understand Book of Revelation, we should have total thorough knowledge of Book of Daniel. Book of Daniel is one of the strongest tools for interpreting the Book of Revelation. If you go and uh, read in chapter 12 of Book of Daniel, and God said to Daniel in verse 4 this, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So Daniel was told to put a seal on whatever was written. 
in that book of Daniel particularly. In other words, the history of book of uh, sorry, the history of Israel was temporarily sealed. And at the end of the days, again, the history of Israel will continue. So book of Revelation. It speaks about what did God do to people of Israel and what did God say about people of Israel and put a seal and don't go further up till I restart it. When you come to verse nine, it says he said, go your way, Daniel, for the word saw shut up and sealed until the time of the end. So the one which was sealed has to be opened. So who is worthy of opening it? Till Daniel, whatever is being said, it's all sealed and happening. And one of the important prophecies is about the end days, till the end. Now the end is nearing. So the angel came and said, who can open this? When the question was raised, and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. So no one in heaven or on earth. At this point, when we think about no one in heaven and on earth, which means no saint in the past. Abraham was such a great man of faith. Moses was such a man who had appreciation from God himself saying he was so faithful. Enoch walked with God. Elijah was raptured. And I can list the names of great people. And none of them can open this book. Gabriel, Michael, and all other angelic beings, none of them can open this. None of them can open this. So who can open? Verse 4. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll to look into it. Now, why John was weeping? And that also loudly. You know, it was a bitter cry. I assume two reasons are possible. One is he was wanting to know what shall be my future? What shall be the future of the people, those who yielded to the gospel message? People, those who had believed, what's going to happen? Jesus said, I will go and I will prepare mansions for you. I will come and I'll take you and we will be there forever. And Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, his ultimate reigning, his glory, his victory. So what's going to happen now? So he was loudly crying. And then there is another cause for that. There is nobody could open it. There's nobody could open it. So one is about his future identity. And the other one is there is no one, none of us, none of us. You know, it's like, um, um, you know, if you think of um, a class teacher, the teacher trains students to write their examination, government board examination. Grade, papers are graded by external graders. 
and every teacher would expect. Oh, the first mark, one of my students should get it. And perhaps all the students are failed in one class. What kind of disappointment will come to the teacher? There's none. There's none. All that here it says is, on our own, we are totally unmerited. On our own. If at all, we are merited in the sight of God because of Jesus. I'm not saying we are absolutely useless. We are absolutely useless if God is not with us. So he was crying. He was crying. Verse 5. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. So one of the elders, apparently this is, as I said, representation of uh, global believers of God. One of the elders, certainly one of the godly believers, elders representing, said, don't try. There is one. Tribe of Judah, lion of the tribe of Judah. Root of David, as conquered. <laughs> Sorry. So that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. So its scroll and seven seals. And each seal has to be opened. And there is one person is able to open and that is the lion of tribe Judah, root of David. You know, root of David, it says about even before David was king, he was king. And tribe of Judah, he came in the form of human, but he was ever king. He conquered. Conquered who? He has conquered. Conquered what? Conquered sin and Satan and death. Isaiah did not do that. Abraham did not do that. Enoch did not do that. Only Jesus conquered sin. He conquered death. Conquered Satan. He comes, he will come, and he will open the scroll. Verse 6. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing. See the contrast between verse 6 and verse 5. Both verse 5 and 6 speak about the Lord Jesus. Five says he is a lion, and six says he is lamb. Verse five says he conquered. Verse six says he was slain. He was slain. You know, the reconciliation comes here when you read the one who was slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So we see seven horns, seven eyes, seven spirits. So the lamb had unique, unique, unique properties. Seven eyes, I believe, all able to see. It's a kind of, you know, high sensitive scanner, able to see every individual, able to see every single person. And seven horns, 
Hans always represent authority, victory, and seven spirits again, the entire universe activities. So what do we see here? He is lion, became lamb, and he permitted himself to be slain. And so he was proven to be the conqueror. Lion, lamb, conqueror, slain. Oh, that is the Lord Jesus. Verse 7. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him. I don't want to say that he 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 just he went to the throne and then grabbed it. He gave and he took. The one seated on the throne, he kept it on his right hand in order to give. And when he gave, he goes and he takes it. So what do we see here? We see the giver and the receiver of the equal status. How I can say that? About the scroll, it is said that no one in heaven, so absolutely there is no one in heaven, but only Lamb of God can take, which means Lamb of God is not mere human. He is God himself. God gives to God. Again, my beloved brothers, when we think about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, I cannot convincingly explain. I don't think anyone could convincingly explain as Bible says. Bible very clearly says that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal and they coexist. And they are co-eternal. Three in one. Description I don't have, but in heaven it will be given. Until then, I believe as it is. So here we see clearly giver and receiver, two distinct persons. When he took the scroll from the hands of the one seated on the throne, Four living creatures, verse 8 says, four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Oh, fell down before the Lamb? Yes, in chapter 4, they fell down before the one seated on the throne. Now they are falling before the Lamb. The Lamb and the one seated on the throne, they are co-equal. Each holding a harp and golden bowls of uh, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So it was it was literally act of worship. But that worship goes by two things. One is praises. The other one is prayers. Praises and prayers. What is the prayers of saints? The prayers of saints are nothing other than praising God. So, such a beautiful worship here we see. 24 elders and four living creatures fall and worship the Lamb as they worship the one who was seated on the throne. When you come to verse 9, it, it speaks about the song that they sang. Verse 9. And 
they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priest to a God, and they shall reign on the earth. You know why it is said in verse 9, a new song? I believe, you know, in that heavenly atmosphere, the, the 24 elders, whatever the representation there, they knew that is going to be filled with people of God. And that's what I said. Abraham and Lazarus are somewhere in, in the heaven. I don't know where is it. But the literal heaven will come eventually, as we did in the book of Revelation. New heaven and new earth will come. New Jerusalem will come. Till then, Abraham and Lazarus and people like him, the great cloud of witnesses, as we read in chapter 12 of book of Hebrews, chapter 11 of book of Hebrews, they are all in one particular place. Now the new song is, all these people are going to be gathered together at one stretch. How did this multitude hear? Because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. Your blood, Lord, ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. It's such a huge sea of people. So it's a new song. It's going to take place, a new song. And not only that, it's a very interesting thing. Many of us, when we think about, we think, when we think about the eternal life, we always think, about, think of heaven. Much more than that is what we read in verse 10. And you have made them kingdom and priest to God, and they shall reign on the earth. Oh. So the people of God will be reigning on the earth. I, I, I still, I cannot give, you know, a total definition for that. But we will be reigning. So in order to reign with Jesus, the ultimate king, I should have the glory of the king. I should have the glory of king. And that's why when Jesus comes, the visible coming of the Lord Jesus, we all will come with him, Colossians chapter 3. When we come, we all will come with him in his glory. So my friends, eternal life should not be limited to only heaven, but also eternal life with glory of the Lord Jesus in order to reign along with him. Verse 11. Then I looked. And I heard around at the throne and the living creatures and the elders. The voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. So when these people were singing, 24 elders were singing, we see an angelic band Beyond any numbers, they come together. And they all now sing together. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. In one sense, angels are so thrilled to see how heaven is going to be filled with people of God and angels of the Lord. They were rejoicing. You know, I just imagine my grandchildren, when they hear some of our relatives are coming to a home, they will be very happy about it. 
you should see the way their countenance brightens. You know why? Somebody is going to join us. Angels are rejoicing because heaven is going to be filled with the people of God. And that is because of the Lord Jesus. And I heard every creature in heaven on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. So heaven is real. Though I don't know where is it right now. Heaven is reserved for the people of God. Now that heaven has some representation of believers there, we don't know fully who they are, what they are. Whether it was only 24 in numbers, who those 24, we don't know. But that heaven is preserved for us. When we go there, number one, we will be made like Jesus. Number two, we will be joining with angelic beings and worship the Lord along with the angels. Number three, we will see God the Father, God the Son, how triune God works, and many other mysteries will be revealed in heaven heavenly mysteries will be revealed. Remember always this. In heaven only, heavenly mysteries will be revealed. There are a number of people, they try to explain what is 666. It's a heavenly secret. How Virgin Mary became pregnant and gave birth to Jesus without a man. It's a heavenly secret. How with human body Elijah was taken into heaven? What did happen between up high in sky and earth? It's it's heavenly secret, divine secret. There are many divine secrets. It's better human wait and see rather than giving all misled definitions. As we continue to read rest of the chapters, we will be rejoicing, knowing who our God is and how beautifully he made program for us. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your kindness and goodness, teaching us your word. It's all heavenly secrets. All these heavenly secrets are written with apocalyptic words. We need your knowledge to understand. Whatever we could understand in the light of the word of God. Father, we try our best to know. But we know a huge mystery is still mystery for us. You're all eagerly waiting, Lord for that heavenly experience which are waiting for us, where you will teach us, clarify us, many divine, about many divine secrets. Thank you, we praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Love of the Father and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us for now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, my beloved brothers and sisters, for your patience. We'll meet again next Thursday. Till then, may God's presence go with you. Be blessed. Amen. <laughs>